All right, welcome to the video for 6.2, classifying the elements. Uh, before we get started, in addition to having your notebook and all that stuff ready, I'd like you to get your reference table and open it up to the periodic table because we're going to be looking at a lot of different parts of the periodic table for this video. So go ahead and hit pause and get your periodic table. Okay, so here we go. So first we're going to take a look at the little squares in the periodic table. And it displays the symbols and names of their elements along with information about the structure of their atom. And here's two samples. Right here, here's one that's in the book. And here's one from the reference table. And we'll take a look at some of the similarities and differences. Uh, they both have the atomic number. This one has it on top. This one has it down here in the lower left-hand corner. They both have the element symbol. The textbook one lists the element name. The one in your reference table does not. Uh, they both have an average atomic mass. Obviously, they're different elements. Uh, they both deal with the electron configuration. The one in your book calls it electrons at each energy level. And the... One of your reference table just has a straight up electron configuration. Uh, something important noted on the reference table is that when the atomic number, the atomic mass is in parentheses, it's the mass number of the most stable or common isotope. So you can pretty much assume that a lot of those elements don't have a stable isotope, if you ask that. Okay, so here is the reference table from, I'm sorry, the periodic table from your reference table. And if you look here, there are group numbers. So group one, group two, group three, group four, group five. So it makes your life pretty easy that if you're asked about to find something from group 15, you find 15, and then there is the group. And we've already talked about the periods or the principal energy levels, right? Because period is the same as principal energy level. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, going down the side. So if you were asked to find the element that is in period six and group 11, find period six, find group 11, and there you go. Okay, so let's take a look at these groups. So group one is called the alkali metals, and that includes lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and francium. And that was just right back in the reference table, going right down to group one. Notice I didn't include hydrogen because it's a non-metal. We put it over here on the left because it is the first element, but hydrogen and helium are kind of the oddballs out, which is why there's this space between them and the rest of the periodic table. Okay, so group two is the alkaline earth metals, and they include beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium, and radium. Uh, group 17 are the halogens. And going from top to bottom, it's fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and astatine. The word halogen comes from, that's right, hal comes from the Greek word hals, meaning salt. And gens come from the Latin genesis, which means to be born. In our case, it's kind of to be made. So halogens are going to be salt makers, or things that make salts. And chapter 7, when we start looking at bonding, we're going to see just how that works. So all of these groups, the alkaline metals, alkaline, that would be the alkaline, earth metals and halogens are all highly reactive, and they don't exist as free elements in nature that they are always found in. 
finally, group 18, the noble gases, also called inert gases, because they don't react with anything. And they are helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and radon. Uh, I'm going to refer to these an awful lot in the coming chapters, especially when we start getting into bonding. Uh, the thing to remember about them is that everybody wants to be like the noble gases. Okay, so next we're going to take a look at the transition elements. Now, they're metals, and they are from going to be from group 3 through 12. Here. These are referred to as the transition elements. They're also sometimes called transition metals because they're all metals. Uh, typically, they are hard solids with high melting points. Uh, these are important terms you gotta know. With the exception of mercury, which as you already know is a liquid, they are much less reactive than groups one and two. And then they will form ions that have color due to half-filled orbitals. And we're going to talk about orbitals in just a few moments. And that kind of starts now. Okay, so, so far in our model of the atom, we've just dealt with shells. All right, so you have your nucleus in the middle here with our shells around it. Now I'm going to draw just three here at the moment. All right, and each of these shells is made up of orbitals. And the actual layout of the periodic tables actually refers to those orbitals. Okay. So in our first row, period one, where we have hydrogen and helium, okay, they both fall only into the S orbital. So the first shell only has room for an S orbital. And the S orbital can hold two electrons. Now we get into our second shell. That's going to have room for an s orbital, but it's also going to have room for what's called a p orbital. And the p orbital can hold up to six electrons. So if we look at our first shell, right, there's room for two because it's only s. If we look at our second shell, it can hold two in the s, two in the s. These refer to the 2 and the S, and then it can hold 6 in the P, P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, P6, for a total of 8 electrons. Now we look at the third energy level, and we're getting into being able to have a D orbitals, or D orbitals, and D can hold up to 10. So when we get into the third, right? Two in the S, and I have six in the P, so we're going to have two in S, six in P, and then ten in the D. A total of 18 electrons that we can hold. And finally, the F orbital can hold up to 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Now, the beauty of this, you don't have to memorize any of these. Okay? The reason why I showed you this picture of the periodic table kind of exploded out like this is because you can see that the S can hold two, because these first two groups represent the S orbitals, or alkaline metals and alkaline electrons. This P block over here to the right represents the P, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six going across there. This middle, where the transition elements are, represents the D, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, which can hold ten. And those two rows underneath, there's fourteen going across, which show you that the F can hold fourteen. All right, so to show a little more detail in drawing it, the reason why I kind of have the 
this down here. This is a tough thing to do because it can get kind of complex, and I don't want to give you more information that is really important for you to memorize. However, it's kind of tough to understand these orbitals without this little bit. Okay, so well, let's pretend now we're making an atom, and we're slowly moving across and filling in where the electrons go. So here's our nucleus, and obviously as you go from atom to atom or element to element, the nucleus is going to get bigger with more protons, but we're just going to ignore that for now and deal with electrons. So, very first one, hydrogen, that's its first shell. It's going to be an S only, because the first shell only has one for S. And hydrogen will have one electron in there. Helium, when we get to the next one, it's going to have a second one in that S orbital, a total of two electrons. And now that that first row is done, there's no more room for anything else there. And now we're going to move to the second row, which is a new shell. So our first electron for lithium is going to go into our second level S orbital. And our next electron for beryllium is going to go into that row. I'm sorry, going to go into that S orbital in that same shell for beryllium. So now we have two in that S. Okay, now we move across to our next one, boron. Now we're getting into our p orbitals. So it already has two in the s orbitals, and we start to fill in the p. So as we move boron, carbon, nitrogen, boron, carbon, nitrogen, and these are all p electrons. And then we have oxygen, fluorine, neon, the other three p electrons. Keep in mind they don't actually look like this. I've shown you pictures out of the textbook, the S orbital. It's going to kind of look spherical. That fills up first. And then the P orbitals actually look like this. It's 3D as well. So a P orbital, we have one that looks like that. And one that looks like that. And then one kind of coming out at you. So I'll just kind of draw it at an angle. Uh, looking like. So we're coming out. Because the electrons like to be as far apart from each other as possible. So they're all kind of different shapes which end up one on top of the other. And then this other one coming out at us and back into the screen here. This is all 3D. This would this is what this second shell actually kind of looks like. But that becomes really complex when we draw it, so I try not to go into too much detail. Okay, so now we get to the third row, and we're starting to get into sodium and magnesium and whatnot. So when we start to fill those out, right, we get to our third. Okay. Sodium is one electron in that S. Magnesium now gets to two electrons in that S. And we move across aluminum. And now we're into the P, so we have aluminum. We have silicon, we have phosphorus, we have sulfur, oxygen, argon, and our total of B. But now we start to have room in the D, except we're going to run into what's called an octet rule. O C T E T rule. That means there's no more than eight electrons allowed in the shell. So even though this third principal energy level, this third shell, has room for 18, we can't put those 10 in yet because we have 8 in the outer shell. So what we do, the reason why these Ds are in the row they're in, go to the next principal energy level, start our new shell. And we're starting with two. We have potassium and calcium. Okay. And then we come back to our third level and we can fill in the rest. That's why these Ds line up 
here. Even though these Ds are actually part of the third principal energy level, they're in the fourth row because we have to go back and fill them in now. So now we start getting into scandium, titanium, vanadium, etc., etc., etc. All right, I strongly recommend going back and watching that another time or two, and we will talk about it in class, and I will draw these in class because here's where it does start to get a little more complicated. All right, that's enough for this one. See you guys in school.